So just how far down do you want to go Well, we could talk it out over a cup of joe And you could look deep into my eyes Like I was a supermodel Thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Today I have Roger Klein from Roger Klein and the Peacemakers. Also Roger Klein from the Refreshments. Before I bring Roger on, a public safety announcement. Let me just say, seatbelts save lives, so buckle up. I've got Roger here, but before I talk to Roger, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now, without further ado, how are you, Roger Klein? I'm Ace, how are you, Ernest? I'm a million bucks shy of being, that's getting old. I mean, I've said that the last two interviews, <laughs> pretty bad, man. I should edit that one out. So, yeah, you're looking good, man. I mean, I've... I've been following your career for years. I've been uh, trying to get hold of you for quite a while. I've actually corresponded with um, uh, the great Jim Dalton, your guitar player, and I finally get to speak with you. Um, the infamous Jim Dalton. Yes. And if people uh, tuning in uh, are not sure exactly if it's the same Roger Klein, yes, it's the same Roger Klein that wrote the King of the Hill theme song, the same Roger Klein that wrote The World is Full of Stupid People, Banditos, yeah. And the same Roger Klein responsible for, um, is it when the home games, I'm Canadian, eh? So when the Arizona, Arizona Dimebacks win, they play your song. Is that the same Roger Klein? Same Roger Klein. I, I, I penned the D-back swing for the, the home team theme. Right on. So do they give you like half off for tickets or? They give me tickets. Actually, I just, I ask and they give me tickets. They give me a wonderful spot too. Like we get to sit right behind home plate and the bar is very close. It's awesome. See, in Canada, we don't know how to market. We'd probably give you a 50% discount for you, and then your significant other pays full. And everybody price. else pays price. But that's uh, that's the difference between our two countries. Now, uh, speaking of your music, i got to tell you a funny story here. Or, oh, by the way, I've just got a short question. Um, can you sum up your musical career really quickly? <laughs> You is totally least, do that. Is the least still laughing in the yeah, back? That's awesome. <laughs> how does it feel? That, how does your musical career feel? Wow. Just sum it up in a couple well, words. Where's the, where's, the, where's the adios button? Right. <laughs> adios, exactly right on. The adios button. Um, no. no I was going. So, yeah, let's get a little bit serious. Funniest thing is, okay, and I just recently saw something about Sammy Hagar. You do the uh, Mexica Circusa. Circusa. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, you it's Mexico, yeah. So I'm a big fan of Mexico. I've backpacked from Mexico City to Acapulco and back. I've been there dozens of times. It's a great country, as you know. You live nearby it. So, yep. anyways, I'm going down to see Sammy Hagar. Um, I'm in, in Sioux, Ontario, and our sister city, Sioux, Michigan, right? So we went on a 75 to a place called Clarkston, Mich Michigan, the DTE Energy Center, and they had Sammy and the Wabos playing. And on the ride there with my buddy Darren, he was playing um, Fizzy Fuzzy Big and Buzzy. Or, cool. Right. So we're listening to that, and I'm getting the, you know, the Banditos, and I've heard that song on the radio, and I'm like, I'm into hard rock at the time, but I went to see Sammy for other reasons. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a cool tune. Okay, when can I put in my CD? But we kept listening to that album, man. And I got to tell you, I literally fell in love with it. The songs like uh, Nada um mekong um just just everything interstate great great songs and great songwriting um and your songwriting is quite unique i'm not the first person to ask you this but where do you where do you think you developed your style for just things like another verse uh, about mexico and um you know things that, even in your lyrics and una soda and horses um i just find they're they're so unique um i'm gonna shut up in a second <laughs> <laughs> you keep going you're making my job easy 
Yeah. And so tell me, um, where did you learn your style really worked for the sound um, you put out, Roger? Man, that was, um, I, I remember the spark the refreshments had. The, the very first time we got together as a four piece was in a basement. Um, and Brian Blush was the, the last, our guitarist was the last piece of that picture. He came in and we all set up and played a few cover songs and the bass player, Buddy Edwards had penned a song called Carefree. And it, it basically, it's a cycle, that almost plays itself. So it's it's easy enough to learn and jam with. We set that up and played Carefree and Brian laid that hook down immediately, instinctively. And we all kind of swooned or got chills or whatever that moment, you know, time stood still like, wow, we have a sound. Um, well, I forgot what the question was, but- Your style um, for writing, writing- music Fast forward, when, when did that- when did that feel like it was actually working was when we took that to the clubs. I had a bunch of songs from an earlier band called The Morals, which uh, amongst those songs were Don't Want to Know, Girly, Blue Collar Suicide, a few of them that appear, of course, on Fizzy Fuzzy, Big and Buzzy. Gave that to the line that became The Refreshments, and there was an instant, really fun chemistry. And we took it to the clubs, and it didn't take very long to where we were, we were selling out 110 seaters, you know, it was a big deal for us in the college band. Right. Anyway, little by little, we went from opening gigs to headliners uh, around town. People started showing up, knowing the words, and it was truly a magic feeling. It was really great. And now, now I'm addicted to it. So Thanks. I think because of my long-winded sentence here, I threw you off, and that's my fault. I was wondering about your lyrics, and where do you think that stemmed from your lyrics? Is it from... Um, obviously experiences or do you read a lot or you have a kind of um I kind of call it when I was telling people about interviewing you I said I would describe Roger's early music with the refreshments especially and even with the peacemakers as almost a romantic desert sunset rock that's the way I feel anyways when I hear a lot of those songs but lyrically you're hired you're now you're our chief of marketing now <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah, by I don't know, stuff, I don't know where I get it. Um, you know, I, I do read a lot, and I love the Southwest, and I love Mexico. Um, I, for uh, for my age, I'm pretty well traveled. I travel a lot in my youth. Um, you know, all kind of all around the world. Um, I've listened to all kinds of music, everything. For, I was a punk rock new wave kid uh, who was chewed country music because I grew up, you know, half on a ranch, mm. and I had to listen to all that country music. At the time, I hated it at the time, and now I realize it's like the real deal. Um, you just put it all together in a crazy melting pot. And I guess that's this moral coil, and it comes out in the form of music. Um, I like to have humility and a sense of humor. I'm also sort right. of snotty and irreverent. So if you right. throw all in, in all those inconsistencies, all those those things from reggae music and, and mariachi to punk rock to American roots rock, and then you get the refreshments and the peacemakers. Right. Um, and, and that's quite, uh, I'm glad you brought up the humor part because there's a lot of um, humorous uh, lines in uh, your lyrics. lyrics. Um, there's a band, I don't know if you're familiar with a band called Bowling for Soup. You bet. You bet. Okay, so they're, I mean, you're similar writing style that's just off the beaten path. It's not cut and dry. It's not, um, what do you call that uh, kind of poetry, um, haiku or whatever it is. It's like <laughs> you... <laughs> You write towards the feeling. I have a haiku of one of my songs, so I'll clue you in later. That's right. That's true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, that's a great thing about listening to your music. Now, um, with the Peacemakers, I find, and I could be wrong, it's, it took a bit of a different um, way. Like, oh, here's a, here's a quick uh, stupid question anyways, but I'm going to ask it. Um, I know that when a couple of the, the former band members um, left the band, um, you, um, I don't know if rebranded is the bad term, but you changed the name to Roger Klein and the Peacemakers. And I was curious because when I first found out about you guys, um, uh, during that trip to, uh, to, uh, Sammy, um, on YouTube, every time I bring up the refreshments and try to pirate an album, <laughs> it came up these 1950s guys. I'm like, no, it's not them. So were you? That's the Swedish band, I believe. A what? They're, I think they're from Sweden. There's a band called The Refreshments in Sweden. Is it them? Okay, so that's the yeah. So did is anybody? Well, I think I'm pretty sure that people have brought that to your attention. That 
there was another band out there called the refreshments. Did that have anything to do with you changing the name or you thought because two of didn't even know about it in the refreshments. We didn't even know about it. Um, okay. And nobody brought it up at whatever the other powers, the BIE record company of booking agents management's never, never even brought it up. It wasn't until we changed our name. We were trying to connect the two catalogs for continuity yeah. at refreshments and peacemakers. We found that out. We're like, Oh, there's another one. So, um, yeah, I mean, we get misdirected from time to time, but I'm sure it's going to good music. So, and I'm sure that their fans come to us by accident, and we just oh, hope yeah. that cross pollinization. You know, so I never thought of that. Ain't no thing. Cross pollinization, like look on the. You, you were talking earlier about how intelligent us Canadians are, eh? No, <laughs> you're the one speaking <laughs> to me. I said more intelligent, like better educated, certainly well mannered. So uh, I have you at the disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Um. So a lot of your shows, um, I've, I've, you know, seen your tour. You, you generally tour, correct me if I'm wrong, the Southwest. You go up as high as Oregon and Washington. Um, right now you've got a few shows in Arizona. You just did the show in uh, Puerto Penasco. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that is almost like a... Cabo Wabo Beach Fest kind of thing. It's a great big party. Like, yeah, tell the viewers that are coming to this uh, interview um, what it's like and why they should attend that every year. Well, if they should go because it's super fun and there's a hell of a lot of good music on a lot of stages all weekend long. Next year will be our 25th anniversary of doing this thing. I never thought it would stick past the first one. Mm -hmm. Um they should come because Rocky Point is beautiful and the people there are friendly and the culture is warm and welcoming and the Peacemakers crowd will buy your drinks and pick you up if you fall down and get you in a taxi. Um, it's just a really, really friendly celebration of life through rock and roll. It's sort of our apex moment in the year. We just did our second weekend of June and it was, again, it just feels like a family reunion. It's, it's super cool. Um, it's gone from one night to basically five now we, we go thurs thursday friday saturday sunday sometimes even monday um or sometimes even wednesday just so it's a, it's a long long thing it's a real value the ticket price compared especially to other festivals is a fraction and i believe the value is is high but mostly come for the people and the culture and the music and it's right. a hoot we're going to be playing our like i said our 25th next year in 24 has uh, has the date been set yet? Um, exact week? Is there a place uh, second reserve? Second weekend, second weekend in June typically is where it stands. So okay. yeah, so mark so that again. Mark I'll again. put links in the description box here for to go to your website so they can click on link to uh, reserve tickets and all that, as well as check out your merch, as well as check out Cancion. Um, how Can many years has that been in um, uh, wow. distillery? No. We are truly a ma and pa organization. We opened up, the original name was Mexican Moonshine. Um, and it stood for some time. And I'll, I'll get to that. It'll be a long answer. But uh, I think we began in, actually, the CEO is here. It's my wife, Elise. When did we begin Mexican Moonshine Tequila and Never? 2009? Uh, we started paperwork back then, but we, our product landed in 2011. Product landed in 2011. We started the idea around 2009. So, um yeah, Cancion is our tequila, the, uh, the band's 401k, because you don't get that in rock and roll. It's also, it's the highest quality tequila you can find. It's uh, an expression of the spirit that we share with our audience. And it's really, while it's 113 here in Arizona, I'm having a margarita. It's a really good afternoon pre-siesta drink. And is it true that Sammy Hagar sold Cabo Wabo because he knew he couldn't compete? Or is that a rumor on Facebook? 100%, actually. That's that's total. Yeah. He was that's like, you I know, I'd I, take, I, I take my billion and run. That's, he was, I, he was did, best against him. I did my research because I saw it on Facebook, so I knew it was true. It must be true. <laughs> he was part of helping to shape the brand in a way. We were, the, the peacemakers were opening for Sammy Hagar and Leonard Skinner back in the day probably about 2008 i think i don't know no, it was americano time don't recall exactly but he he's a he is such a gracious host anyway we got to open for him uh leonard skinner got sick and we went somebody in leonard skinner got sick 
And we went from playing 20 minutes to 40 minutes to an hour in front of his crowd. And so we really had an amazing opportunity. And he would show up, bring us on stage every night, include us in his prayer before he went on stage with his band, invite us to his dinner post-show, and oftentimes would stand side stage and make us nervous by watching. Anyway, I remember, yeah, it was great. I remember getting off stage one time and we had played Mexican Moonshine and we had brought uh, a horn player, a guy named Rick Quiroz, to play the horn on that that particular number. And as we got off stage, I Sammy standing there and I gave him a high five and he, he just had his arms crossed and Mexican Moonshine. I should have thought of that. <laughs> anyway, furthermore, we were going, we were shaping the idea of the brand um, it, it, the, it, uh, way before it ever got into a bottle. And he said, he sent me down, Cabo Wabo was already extant. And he said, I know you consider you, you guys a, a, ro- a rough and ready rock and roll band, but don't make your tequila that reflection. Make it fine because that's what your music is and that's what that your legacy is going to be. Take your time, find the right distillery, the right taste, the bridge between traditional and gringo and don't do don't do tequila any disrespect. Don't make it a cheap thing. Even if it takes more time and more money, do it right because your music is fine and this is your legacy. Don't screw it up. Anyway, so we took years to find the right distillery and it was part of his advice and we sort of changed course. course. Wow. Well, wow. it reminds me of the um, Seinfeld episode, the protege and the, um, what's the other thing? Protege and... Um... I don't know. I'm a Seinfeld fan, but not not recalling the title. Protege and the um, I don't know. Anyways, maybe I'll edit this out. <laughs> um, no way. Um, is it the yeah. title? Pardon? Is it the title of the of the episode? It's where um, George mentor and protege. George gets a mentor to read a book for him on um, <laughs> risk management, and. Oh, yeah. It gets screwed up with um, Jerry's uh, buddy there um, that he can't stand, the guy with the Ovaltine jokes. Hold on. Uh, like, it's like, I'm getting the philosopher stuck in my head. Kafka, Banya. Banya, yeah, it's like. Yeah, <laughs> Kafka, yeah. not Kafka. Banya's your mentor? Yeah. yeah, that was it. So anyways, it just sounds like um, you and Sammy had that kind of a relationship. Now, I don't know if Elisa is still listening, but I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you talk sometimes, Roger, and when you talk business like that, you actually sound like Sammy. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take his compliment. Absolutely. So should uh, so should, should Sammy come on my show? Absolutely, and I'll pitch it to him if you wish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wish. Um, no, well, Done. I do actually, but. Well, I'll, 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 I'll extend my influence and we'll see what happens. Well, that'd be great. Um, I want to keep much longer, but one question I have, I didn't uh, research this part because I just wanted to talk to you and just tell you how great of a musician you are and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, anything in the Pike uh, Peacemaker wise in the studio soon coming up? I yes, know. thank you for asking. Um, quite a bit. Actually, I, I wrote quite a bit pre and and through uh, quite a bit pre-COVID, not a lot through COVID. I kind of got artistically paralyzed and confused. However, I have about eight songs that the band and I have started to, as we say, demo. Um, we're going to go into the studio in August and work those out. And I'm also working on writing with, uh, have you ever heard of Miles Nielsen? Yeah. He's the son yeah. Rick Nielsen, yep. founder of, of Cheap Trick. He, he's a good friend and he and I are going to spend some time together in the next few weeks working on new music for him and for me. And I'm also just going to spend some time with um, your friend whom you met earlier, Jim Dalton. Yeah. And he and I have beautiful experiences and co-writing together. So I'm working on new music with not only myself, but also co-writing and putting my, my new old music together uh, for a release, hopefully recording in the, in the end of this year and a release hopefully in the spring. In the meantime, there was this other project we did in Texas with some good friends um, from Reckless Kelly from Mike and the Moon Pies, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of artists that we were messing around with in Texas. We did new versions of old songs, and it's been a difficult introduction, but we're going to get that out this year too. So there'll be the Texas sessions come out as we go back into the studio to do new music and release in the spring. So I hope that wasn't confusing, but yes. No, that's music. great. 
No, man. It's been a while. I, I, when you said 2017 was when they part coming out, I just I have this. I don't know when. Uh, I don't know where the time went. Just all of a sudden went from 2017 to 2023, and I realized that I haven't put on a new record in six years, which right. is the longest spell that there's ever been for me for my career without uh, putting on new music usually i'm between two and three years per per record well i think 2019 to late 2022 um it was like a black hole in, in civilization so you can take those out of the equation so it's been about four Lordy. years yeah yeah if you thank you i appreciate the grace period yeah um so obviously you're going to tour to um well you tour i know because you love it that's the first thing i know that but yeah. are you going to be touring a little bit more extensive um, when the new album comes out? Is there any chance of coming up to Canada here, eh? I mean, I'm on the border. Like, I can even, eh? I can even, I can even make to. Toronto go into Michigan. <laughs> right on, cool. Uh, to, to Detroit, I think, is probably our closest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd right? love to get back to to, to Canada. Um, just, just need a reason, so we'll put on a new record and come visit y'all. Right on. And... Um, Favorite Canadian musician, artists, or actor, comedian, or interviewer? Magically hip, probably. You know, like oh, so okay. good stuff. Or Downey. So, yeah. uh, Lim Lifter. Do you know Lim Lifter from back in the day? I don't. So I would be lying if I said they did. Uh, we toured with them. Look them up. Lim Lifter with the refreshment sketch tour with them. They were just a really smart, uh, hard rock and three piece band and kick ass. I don't think they're around anymore, but they were great. My wife's going to go see Brian Adams. See Canadian? I believe so. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to see Joan Jett. And, well, well, Joan Jett's opening, but Brian Adams is. Yeah, Brian Adams is definitely Canadian. He, I've interviewed Brian. Great. great guy. So, yeah. Um, Met him one time at a Mexican food restaurant. He was gracious. Is that right? For sure. Well, yeah, he was, in, he was playing here in Arizona, and my family and I were, my, my kids were this big, and we went in, and he was he was actually waiting for a table. You know, he didn't, didn't wave himself around sitting there waiting for a table just a friend humble canadian right we're all humble you're yeah. humble at least is humble <laughs> so uh last quick question here i think uh, and i'll let you get back to what you're doing um what's the opposite of unsubscribe subscribe everybody do as roger klein says and subscribe to this channel so you get these great interviews uh or else roger's just going to go down there and kick your ass i'm pretty Pretty heavy right now, too. I can probably do that for you. You were just at the gym, I heard? Uh, yeah, like four, four or five years ago. Just just recently. <laughs> hey, thanks, Roger. No, it's been a pleasure, man. I appreciate it. Pleasure. I'll put, I'll put links below um, to uh, Cancion, to um, the website, so people can check everything out, knowing you're on tour uh, in thank your you. area, as well as when the album's coming out. And uh, once again, thanks, Elisa, for uh, helping me out setting this up. Cool. Peace be with you and thank you. Thanks, Roger.